There's something called what we refer to from 1970 onwards, taught by Father Babian and Dr. Malachi Zedjo, that there's something called a spiritual awakening and a DNA explosion, a transformation of sorts, where you, your, your inner being, the, the, the who you are as a person, sometimes just like as a baby learns how to crawl, how learns how to, you know, touch things and experience things, etc., is all being recorded in their DNA. So the master teachers explain to us that in your DNA, okay, there's memories in your DNA. And those memories are activated, okay, by certain tones, sounds, vibrations, and frequencies. All right. And that information is sometimes in the form of words. So what the master teacher has done is by way of these series of books that he's um, introduced us to, he's allowed us to then experience these information and reactivate the memories that are encoded in our DNA. OK, that's what's, what's what's referred to as a DNA explosion, because now your memories that's already there have now been activated. Yeah. So your DNA doesn't forget anything. It's just stored information. But that stored information is sometimes switched off. OK. And then you have what is known in modern science as amnesia. Yeah. So they call it amnesia where you're mentally asleep. You know, or you've forgotten your heritage and you've forgotten your past and you've forgotten your origin. So it has to take somebody with the right medicine and the right formula to be able to activate you and, on, and activate your DNA. So this activation has taken place. So I'm just going to read something from um, one of the series of books that the master teacher wrote. Okay. And the, the question was asked. This is from a book called The Black Book Part 2. And the question is asked, what is the meaning of nature? Okay. And he explains, nature is from the Latin natura or natus to be born. So nature birthed me at the right place, at the right moment in time to fulfill the mission of renewing our story. I came not to change the truth, but to fulfill the truth. Time has revolved revolution. This what um, brother um, Habtu Raye was talking about, and you know what is the um, how does wolves of that help you, etc. Well, it's a revolution cycle we're in now. It's time for you to renew your history, our story. And then the questions asked in Black Book Part Two: Who are you, and where are you from? I'm a product of your needs, an answer to your questions, a fulfiller of your dreams. However, first know that I. The great Natir Amun Nubi Ra'ach Pata, who did not rule on earth, but rule amongst the stars. I'm also known as Amun Nubi Ra'ach Pata, or Amun Nub Ra'kapata, the sun raising out of the east onto the west, who throughout time on earth was known as the great Tahutwi, or Tahuti. Yeah, so... You know, there's there's um many books out there written by this um no, notable scribe. Okay, when you go into ancient Egypt, you find the hieroglyph of Tahuti. Okay, with an ibis, like an ibis bird, and uh, he's holding a quill and he's writing. He's a recorder of time. All right, and and and, and names, etc. So being at Tahuti, he's he's um that particular person. There's a, a natural particular book that's ascribed to him, known as the Emerald Tablets. And there's many different publications and readings, etc., about the Emerald Tablets. But many people don't realize that Tahuti has incarnated, yeah, in human form. And this is where the master is alluding to that the many different titles and names that he's acquired over the years, Tahuti is one of them. So he's a being from Septet, Sirius, even called Tahuti, Zahuti. Tahotwi, or in Greek, they called him Thoth, or they called me Thoth. Thoth, Thought, Thought, and Hermes, Thrice Megistus. So when you hear about Hermes, the thrice three times great in um, um, Greek mythology or Greek um, teachings, this is referring to the being known as Tahuti. Yeah, so Tahuti is the being that incarnates every 25,000 years or 24,000 years in cycle with the 24,000 years 
of the planet Earth. Yeah, so it, it, anyone who does astrology, no, sorry, astronomy, and also um, learns, teach, studies the stars, etc., and cyclical changes and patterns, you realize that the planet revolves every 24,000 years. It has a 24,000 or 25,920 year cycle. All right. And in that cycle, a being comes and incarnates. Okay. Oh, yeah. And this being that incarnates every 25,000 years is known as Tahuti. Yeah. He's also called by the Arabs of Islam, Al Khadir, Al Messi, and by the Hebrew Rabboni, Ha Mashiach, also called Isa Al Hadi Al Mahdi. The Grand Mufti of the Western World, Al Mukhlas, the Purifier. The Al Mujaddid, the Reformer, Al Kupt. The Axis, Al Imam, the Leader. Melchizedek, Angel of Justice. Mikael, Angelic Being, Yanun, the 19th Elder, Murduk. The Anunnaki, Malachi. The Messenger of Fulfillment and Atum Ray, the Great Deity of the Sun Ray, Ra. Ro'oi, raised mm -hmm. to the heights, 720 degrees, 360 degrees of physical understanding, and 360 degrees of spiritual understanding. The Supreme Grand Hierophant of the Ancient Egyptian Order. So, that is the being that has incarnated. And from this incarnation, his job is to walk us out through all the many different um, coatings of, of, of indoctrinations. So you have the coatings of religion, you have the coatings of um, belief systems, you know, you have the coatings of, you know, even about our, our physiology and the origin of our history. There's been many different people who have come along, but they've never taught us, okay, from the 1920s upwards, most of them was teaching a religious aspect of our, of our story, never a true origin of our story. So, Pana Bab Yanun, Dr. Malachi is a job. That's his job, is to walk us through all of these schools and eventually get us to the point where we are now responsible for who we are as deities and introduce us to the fact that we are deities, we are supreme beings that are actually forgotten who we are, you know, because of all the different misconceptions and mis um, lies and it misses misinformation that's being given to us. You know, we've been subjugated to so many things. So if you have any questions on that or anything else in particular, you know, this is your opportunity to ask those questions and so that your answers can be, you know, you can fulfill that quench, that thirst that you may have. Is your name written in the palm of our hands? Did our creator sign his work? In the palm of our hand, Yah. Uh, they, they need to be, is that an old question or um, just like live question? Uh, that's a question from earlier. From so earlier. Chat, yeah. yeah, I couldn't really, you'd have to be, be a bit more, elaborate a bit more on that question, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, but I, I can explain it in the sense that there are, when you're saying creator, you have to understand what, what, you, what do we mean by creator? Because different cultures, Okay, have different meanings for what a creator is to them. You know, so it's not just one linear or one fits all glove where, you know, this creator is for one in you know, every race of people. Because what you have to realize is that, like, when you go into the um, origins of species or different races, you have um, the original race on the planet who are known as the African race. Okay, and then you have the Dravidians, then you have the Mongolians, and then you have the Caucasians, etc. So from all of these different races, they will ascribe to a particular creator. Yeah, and, and what's happened is that we've been given this one glove fits all approach where everyone is praying to one so-called get God character. But it's not, it's not a, just a one particular being. You have to go into the cultures and then realize that these cultures Especially the African race, they got a way of life. They had a way of life. They had a, 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 a spirituality and they were connected to who they were connected to. Then you have, you go to the Dravidians, you have their culture and who they connected to, you know. So it's really hard to explain that. But like as I was saying, there's something known as genetic markers, okay, that can identify species 
to their particular origin. So when you have, for instance, the African race, in um, the African race, to identify who we are, you can tell by our hair. Our hair is the most unique thing on our, on our body because it curls and is the most curliest and it grows towards the sun. Every other race, when you look at them, their hair go, grows downwards. Yeah, it, um, it's flak. So that's a, a genetic inheritance or genetic marker that differentiates us. So the image and likeness of our creator will be in our image. Do you understand? And then again, you go to the Dravidians, the image and likeness of their creator will be um, someone that will look or represent them. So i.e. I, Krishna, um, who else is there in the Indian pantheon? You have Krishna, you have Vishnu, you have all of these. So they're depicted in their image. You understand? And then you've got, um, you go to the Greeks. The Greeks depict their so-called religious or creator in their image. When you go to the Greek pantheon, you have Zeus and you have all Apollo and you have all of these different names. Okay, that ascribes to them. So in that, in saying that, there are markers, but I'm not familiar with the one uh, with, uh, on the palm of the hand. Yeah, but there are markers. Yeah. The chat is Batar God, the creator of everything and representation of God. And then somebody else after that. And I ask, when you say creator, you mean actual original beings versus original energy source. And did this source create the beings for each of the races? Ooh, that's a, that's a big one. Okay, um, let me see if I can go to... Right, so the first one was regarding... Um, repeat that again, the first one. It's Patar God, okay. the creator of everything. Right. And representation of God. Okay. When we're dealing with Patar, like I said earlier, we've got different cultures that had the representation of their creator. So Patar will be the representation or the deity that we as Africans will connect with because Patar will be our creator in that sense. You with me? And you have, like I said, you have other creators for other races, you know. So when we're dealing with Patar himself, Patar, as it says, he manifested out of the primordial soup, okay, and utterance, the utterance of his, of, of his words, now, it's a, there's a scientific basis to that because what you're hearing, you're hearing, you're reading in symbolism when you're dealing with the ancient Egyptian, um, stories. So when you talk for our friends and talk about Patar and he spoke and then beings came about, when you, when you take it into, um, the realms of what energy is, okay, sound is a form of vibration, okay, and that vibration, when it slows down, can actually turn into different colors. So, the primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. So when you're talking about the utterance, okay, of, of certain tones, these tones have vibration, these tones have frequency, and these tones, when they slow down in vibration and frequency, they materialize. Yeah, and that's where you get the word matter from. Yeah, and they manifest into form. So as energy, okay, Beings existed in a state of pure energy. And then what happened was the thought, which is another form of energy. When you think about something, like if I say to you now, think about an apple, okay? You think about an apple. Now I say to you, think about the color of the apple. That color, that apple has a color. It could be green, red, etc. Then if you ask again, um, you know, think about what the apple can do to your body. Then you start to think about the nutrition of the apple and what it can do to your body. Yeah. And think about that and what the apple can do. And, you know, when it's planted as a seed and how it grows. So what you're doing here is you're actually imagining and you're creating a visualization and a manifestation of something. So in the realm of energy, beings existed and beings used the power of thought to produce and make things manifest and make things grow. Because what, what we tend to um, misunderstand is the English language. When we're saying create or creator, right, the, the word create is a is the prefix. And then you have the or or creation, I-O-N, at the end of it. So that's the suffix. So the, this is known as morphemes. If you go study the English or the English language or any other languages, you always know that there's a root to um, the root words. Okay, so the root word of the word um, creation, for instance, you have the word create. 
Now, when you go into the, the root of the word create, you're talking about something that grows. It's not like um, the religious concept of someone got a, a rib and then decided to make man out of the dust of the ground and then man became a living soul. It doesn't work like that. Creation works in stages of energy. So the energy that was produced was the thought. And then the thought then slowed down to become the colors. Yeah, this was all being done in what is known as darkness. Yeah, so if you understand what darkness is, darkness is the state where everything exists, right? And then from that darkness, things came to light. Yeah, so just like you have the sun, the sun started from a stage of hydrogen and then into from hydrogen to helium. Okay, these were the stages of it. And it was a fusion that took place. And it was that fusion that took place that produced the light. Yeah, but prior to then, it was in darkness. So everything existed in darkness. And so our ancestors or the beings that you know as energy or what we refer to as patah, which was the utterance, okay, existed in a state of darkness, in a state of um, supreme essence. And then from that supreme essence, things then started to manifest or materialize by way of tone, sound, vibration, and frequency. Does that make sense to everybody in here? Am I explaining things yeah, clearly? Okay, so for, for the listening audience, that's how um, patah, we ascribe patah. So it's more of an utterance, it's more of a tone. Do you see what I'm saying? That's, um, uh, uh, um, how, how, how can I give it? applied or given in reverence to this particular being because what you have to realize is that we as physical beings on this planet yes we are all energy at the end of the day yeah and this, this can be proven because even when um <clears throat> You have to think there's electrical impulses that takes place in your brain and there's, there's something called synapses and then there's that synapse reacts to another synapse. So you're talking about electricity. Yeah. And electricity is a form of energy. When you're talking about your central nervous system, your central nervous system for it to work, it has to have electricity that is, is constantly being powered up into your brain in order for it to get charged up. Okay. So everything's electrical. Everything is, um, vibration. Everything is frequency. Right. And, what, what's happening is that the beings that we refer to as our ancestors, they existed in that supreme state of energy. And then what took place is that with their powers of their thought and their imagination, okay, they were able to create worlds, yeah, in, in, in moods and schemes of vibration. So these worlds that they created, Finally, um, with their thoughts and, 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 um, power behind it, they created Earth, they created the Sun, they created, um, other galaxies, etc. Then when it was time for them to incarnate, yeah, they slowed down their vibration and incarnated into flesh. And the manifestation of that would have been Patak. Yeah, as the Patakites. That's what we refer to ourselves as originally. We were the original Patakites. So these Patais, they got their essence from this original source. Does that make, does that make things clear? Does, is that understandable? Yeah. So from that original source, these Patais, they feed off that and evoluted gradually over a period of millions of years into what we now know today as the human being. Yeah. But they, they originally didn't look like this. The original Patais resided in the waters. Okay, and this earth wasn't a, um, a physical planet as in soil. It was a water planet. Yeah, so what you have to cast your your mind back to, and this is part of the remembering process of what the master teacher is teaching, is that your DNA actually remembers these things once you're told about them. So originally, earth was a water planet, yeah, referred to in ancient times as Tiamat or Tamtu. It had, it had many different names. This is just one of the names we, we call it today, Earth. So when it was a water planet, the land mass didn't really matter. It was only thousands and thousands of years later that we evoluted onto land. But so this being that, that it was a water planet, the beings that dwelt here were aquatic creatures. 
yeah? And these aquatic creatures were known as our ancestors, which, which were seeded here. They were actually seeded in the waters, and then we evoluted from the waters, and eventually, through different um, uh, disasters and ca catastrophes that happened on the planet, we were pushed out into the desert, into other places, into forests, into um, seas, swamps, etc. And then what we had to do then, we had to adapt. Yeah, eventually our adaptation made us into who we are today. But from the original source, we were actually aquatic beings that were seeded here from another star constellation. It wasn't, we weren't even originally from here. We were seeded here. Then our ancestors incarnated after millions of years and then they actually, um, what's the word, created, ch had children. But the way they had children wasn't the way you would call uh, like sexual reproduction. It wasn't like that. Initially, it was genetics. So they genetically created beings so that they could incarnate into them. That was the original um, thing. They would incarnate here, do their, what they needed to do, and then go back to their original source. That was what was taking place. Okay? So just to give you a... If you have any questions on that, you know what I mean? If there's any confusion, please I'm ask. Just, right, from your explanation, I'm yeah. just wondering if that's why we're made of 78% water. Initially, the reason why your body is 78% water is due to the fact that you are, you are an aquatic creature, yeah? And you know, even through our evolution in the gestational periods of our, in our mother's womb, so you have the gestation period where you look, if you go and study the, uh, um, the aminotic fluid and the, and, the, and the chicken, for instance, the chicken looks very similar to a, a, a child that's growing, do you know what I mean, in the mother's womb. Mm -hmm. And then from that evolution, we went to another stage of evolution looking slightly different. You know what I mean? We had large heads and large black eyes. And then from there, we evolved into another creature or um, evolutionary being and this was part of all our cycles that we went through so there was a time when beings in integrated or intersected and then they mixed in with us so that can be shown in our gestational period in our mother's womb where we're once what the master referred, referred to as um, reptilians when we had the webs and you still even have the reminiscent of the webs now okay and if you look at your skin very closely your skin is actually very fine scale, scales, tiny scales, yeah? So that's just part of it. And then you have your, what the master referred to as the Rumadian Grey. So as we were evoluting in the waters, other beings were coming and let's just say they were taking um, specimens of us and then they would then implant their own DNA into, into them, into us by taking the specimens, the DNA from us. And then they will make another model of themselves and, and leave them here to evolute. So, for instance, the Qatarites were a mixture of Rumadian grace and extraterrestrial beings that came from the Orion star system. Okay? And then you also had beings that came from the Sirius star system. And then they mixed in as well. And hence, you have when, you know when a child is birthed, you have this, um, they refer to as fine hair. That's on the baby. It's called Lanugo. Yeah, you, you, you can look this up. And so this fine hair is your um, Syrian tree that you have from extraterrestrials that mixed in with us and also other beings as well. That, so there's been a whole mesh of beings that have stepped in, taken the original being that was here, and they've implanted their own DNA, you see what I'm saying, in, into, into them in order for them to survive and live on this planet. That was our evolutionary process that, but I'm keeping it very short because there's so many interventions and interceptions during that period of time mm -hmm. yeah, that took place. But yes, 78% of our body is water due to the fact that this was originally a water planet. So our birthday as such, it goes back to the time of, let's say the dinosaurs. Do you know what I mean? We existed in the water known, known today as mermaids. You call us mermaids mermen, and now they, they give you Marvel movies called Aquaman, do you know what I mean, depicting the origin of these beings, that there was a subterranean world. This is all talking about our story. 
but it's just that they put their faces, their images, and then make it into a thing. So when we come talking about this, we sound crazy. That's that's the whole point of these other mm-hmm. what we refer to as Luciferian forces. Their job is to make us seem like we're crazy in what we're talking about. But what the master is saying is that you have this in your DNA. It's in your genetic makeup. Because your genes, they store information. If you go and research what DNA, how much um, memory or information DNA can store, it can store terabytes and petabytes of information in one cell alone. Yeah, that's how that's how deep it, it, it goes. So you can store millions of lifetimes or thousands of lifetimes in your DNA. And and the reason why you're remembering some of these things or is activating some of these things is because somebody has now triggered it. And that's part of Abhya Nun, Dr. Malika Jujok, with that right information has triggered that encoding that's inside you. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah? There's something on the cinema that's coming on called the Aquaman, isn't it? Yes, exactly, yeah. 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 Right. There's that all related to the Rainbow Project. The Rainbow Project? Yeah. It's related to many different projects, yeah, but it should be okay, it should be okay now, yeah? Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's, um, it's related to the Rainbow Project because when they were terraforming the planet, like, remember, you have to cash, I'm trying to get you to see this as not just a cinematic you know what I mean, representation, but a reality, a real life situation that did take place. And and know that Earth was a water planet. They, they, they've confirmed this because all creatures evolved. They say everything evolved from the water. So it must have been a water planet. So being that it was a water planet, when the beings um, evoluted out, they had to create what is known as spheres. So that, that rainbow that you're talking about were actually spheres of layers of um, known as the mesosphere, the ionosphere, etc. These were layers of spheres so that the sun's rays, when it filtered through, it wouldn't affect the new being, the being that was evolving on the planet. Mm. So that's the reason why the Patais were protected in that sense. It was known as the Rainbow Project. Then you also have the Noon Project. The Noon Project was before the Rainbow Project when they seeded life on this planet. Yeah, and this was all by the being known as Patar. That's why mm. we give reverence to Patar because by way of his DNA, Patar actually seeded this this planet with his own genes. I know it sounds far fetched, but when you when you actually go into um, sciences, what scientists are doing today, they literally did the same thing that our ancestors used to do, where they'll take a piece of their DNA and then enhance it or upgrade it. Yeah, and they call it now, they use a, a particular machine called CRISPR. You know, this DNA making machine where you can rewrite RNA and DNA and piece it together. And then they call it cloning or they give another name for it. You with me? So it's the same sim- um, principle that our ancestors were using. They were, they were geneticists. You with me? So they knew how to um, clone or upgrade, etc., utilizing DNA. All right. Yes, my brother. Yeah. Um, when we incarnate, do we incarnate into the same bloodline? If not, does that mean we have many ancestors? Okay. The first question, when we incarnate, yes, we, we can or do have the potential to incarnate into the same bloodline because it is dealing with um, genetics and it's dealing with the fact that when you're saying lineage and you're saying material lineage, you actually incarnate through your mother's side. Of, of, of the bloodline because your mother has the mitochondria DNA you with me so when people do come back or reincarnate because the reason why you're coming back in the first place is because you didn't fulfill or perfect your being right that's why you come back yeah it's like um we were having a talk in the, in the car today literally about how when you um you don't make the grade yeah and you didn't use you're in a classroom you have an exam and then, you know, you don't make the grade and then you you have to stay in that same class or go back as another step. I mean, this happens in like places like Jamaica and Ghana. I know that for a fact. If you don't pass, you're staying in that same classroom until you go, you know, you pass. So in that respect, yes. And then what happens is that because of mixture, now that we're all mixed, if your mother is from a different race or your father is from a different race, the potential is that you can be, you can have that lineage pass through you 
and then you'd have to edit again be born through them <clears throat> so that's that's another aspect to it as well it's not just a clear cut thing of where you know when you're born that's it but if you're from a different um uh, ancestral lineage you might pot potentially <clears throat> come through that lineage as well yeah. where is the best place to start learning about spirituality <laughs> well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna brag and boast, but right here, um, the reason why I, I I say here, depending on what spiritual frequency or vibration you are made up of, because I could say here, and it, you may not take to it. You with me as a person? Because um, as I explained to you before, every race has their origin. Yeah, so you had the Dravidians. If you were a Hindu. And you came to study here. That's fine because what we teach in Wu Sabak is a is a science, and that science can be applied to any race. You with me? Because it's dealing with natural nature. So if you're practicing things to do with natural nature, it still can assist and help you and benefit you. But in a sense of um, how far you are able to um, traverse or go, and and what type of um, frequency works for you. Like, for instance, we as um, Nagaru, that we refer to ourselves as an African race, there's certain tones and frequencies and vibrations that we naturally resonate on, which is the F, A, and C. So you have um, the F, A, and K, okay, which is dealing with the human body, the cosmos, and also um, the natural nature or nature itself, the mm -hmm. F, A, C. Mm -hmm. So then there's different scales in music. Okay, so the different tones and then there's different scales. So, for instance, a Dravidian, if you can tell alone by the language that they speak, that they have a different tone. You can tell by the music and foods that they list, they, they listen to or eat, that is different to us. So, just by natural nature, you will eat and consume the foods that is natural to you, and also listen to the music that's more con conducive for you. However, um, spirituality. It's just that you're dealing with energies. You with me? So the energy that works for you is what you should be utilizing. So for a Hindu or Dravidian, utilize the energy that's good for you. For African, you find the energy that works for you. And then you, you, you know, obviously, um, work on it and perfect it. Likewise with Dravidian. If it's for, um, a Mongoloid, likewise the same thing. The Bukasu, same thing. They have Wiccanism. Yeah. They have, in their culture, they call it Wiccanism. What's happened is over the past 6,000 years is that we've been indoctrinated into their religion, into their um, powers and forces called Wiccanism. And Wiccanism is actually religion. That's what religion is. It's actually a form of Wiccanism because Wiccanism um, deals with incantations and invocation of certain tones. So, for instance, when you're saying um, hello, yeah, you're saying, you know, a, a tone. If you're saying, for instance, um, somebody's name, that name like John, Fred, Mark, etc. Yeah, or surnames like you know Johnson. All of these things, these are tones. Now, what Martin teacher um, Dr. Marka is explaining is that because it's dealing with tones, tones are linked to your spiritual essence. So that spiritual essence, every time you call that tone, the beings who are linked to you on that same resonant frequency also are linked to you. And they can also affect your life because it's like energy doesn't die. Energy just transforms into one state or another. So even though um, physically they're dead, yeah, they, you know, they've gone back to the elements of the planet, the essence of them, which is the spiritual aspect of them, still lingers on. And that spirit is, is tied to a tone, a vibration and a frequency. So when you're saying, my name is Mark, or my name is John, or my name is this, yeah, you're opening up an actual doorway to allow these disembodied entities to actually come into you because your your body is actually a doorway. I mean, your that your essence is a doorway, is a gateway to, to um, multi-dimensions, different dimensions, you know. So these are the aspects that um, they knew about in Wiccanism, you know, and they knew about when they introduced us to religion, etc., or they knew about when... They, they um, kidnapped us from our original home and ancestral lands and then they indoctrinated us into these different foreign religions because they knew that tones was a way to open you up. 
So when you go to church, for instance, and you're singing these hymns and, you know, you're, you're calling on these deities or these gods, etc. These are all tones, vibrations. And what it's doing is, is actually opening up your chakras, these energy centers that's inside you. And there's an etheric link back to these beings. Some of them are reside on lower levels of vibration. Some of them reside on higher levels of vibration. But what it is, is they have to lower your vibration so that it can be what they call resonant. Yeah, the resonant frequency. What is resonant frequency? Say like you're in your house and a truck drives by your house. Yeah, and then all of a sudden the glass in your cabinet starts to go and it starts tinkering. What's happened is the resonant frequency of that glass has matched the, the vibration of that truck that's driving past. So now the frequency is the same. So that's what they've got us to do. They've managed to get us to sing these hymns and listen to rock music and all of these things to bring down our frequency and vibration so that their, their resonant frequency can then take residence inside you. You see what I'm saying? And because they res reside within you, as I said before, DNA can store how many terabytes? How many petabytes? How many whatever? It can store information or energy. And these beings are can, can just lay dormant in the cell of your body until you get a emotional wave of anger or you get an emotional wave of lust or whatever it is, emotional wave of wanting to smoke or emotional wave of love even. You with me? But whatever emotional is, Emotional energy feeds them. You see what I'm saying? And when they feed them, they're awake. And then what happens is they start to climb the ladder. Yeah, they climb the ladder to the point where they start to influence your thoughts and your thinking and your behavior and your moods. And you think, well, obviously you're not aware of this. You think it's just you. So this, these are the things that the master teacher has made us aware of. So in order to protect ourselves, he's given us our tones back the FAC, in order to protect ourselves, we now call out on our ancestors because they now and create a protection. Do you see what I'm saying? He's now taught us how to speak our own language because now what we're doing is we're, we're speaking a language and that tone is literally buffering or pushing away the other energies and tones and vibration that's coming towards us. Do you see what I'm saying? So this is the science that the master teacher is teaching us. You know, and um, something I actually picked up when I was le um, reading um, some of the Pataraks, etc. The reason why oscillation takes place, which is a back on full wave-like motion, and the reason why we, if you watch it on Avatar, they did this. When they were sitting down, okay, and they were chanting to Gaia, or whether their ancestral planet was alive, they were moving, they were swaying, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Well, that's oscillation. Now, if you understand that your body is made up of crystals, yeah, it's a crystallization form. Your bones are actually crystals, yeah? And these crystals, your brain is a crystal. Your pineal gland is a crystal. So all these crystals, what happens with crystals when it has to oscillate? It creates an electromagnetic field. And that electromagnetic field then starts to draw in currents into your body. You understand? So the science of actually chanting when you're swaying it's actually a science where you're actually creating an oscillation which is great creating a what's known as a capacitor yeah and that capacitor stores this this um energy and then you're able to harness that energy and where you can actually have access to your ancestors much more easily on a more random you know easier basis they actually can communicate to you they give you inspiration they guide you they, you know in the form of like mental thoughts you know sometimes you think well, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, what the, these, these are your answers actually speaking directly to you. Okay. Um, and the other part of the question, what, was that it? Or what was it again? It was. It's to do with the, the incarnation and. Um, it was uh, when we incarnate. Uh, the full question was when we incarnate, do we incarnate into the same bloodline? Okay. If so, not, does that mean we have many ancestors? Right. So that linking into all, all that aspect is that you do have many ancestors because this is not the first time us sitting in this room now. This is not the first time you've been on planet Earth. Yeah. It's because we didn't make the grid. We, we, we messed up somewhere along the line. We didn't perfect our being. So we had to come back. And what the master teachers explain is that um, we have 
most of us have incarnated 9,000 times, but we have up to 24,000 times to perfect our being. And that perfecting of your being is basically what he's been teaching is Ashok, divine love and practicing divine love and practicing the, the, the things that Wu Sabat teaches, which is essentially linking in with your ancestors and, and speaking the tones because your tone, the tone is a, is a protection. I know it's hard to fathom that at the moment if you're not speaking it or it may sound strange, you know, Trust me, we, we, we all went through it where it sounded strange to learn a new language, etc. But when you start to, start to understand what language is and how language defines and actually creates your reality, that's the reason why he's doing it. Um, he's, he's taken us on, to, on this journey. Because when you're speaking your own language, what has tends, starts to happen is that your reality changes as well. Yeah, and when your reality changes, you are able to create Things I think the, uh, the brother up to was explaining this last week, wasn't you? About about language and tones, etc. So it's very important for us to try and speak our own language again, yeah. Um, and and that's where our, your ancestors come in because if you're linked into say European ancestry, okay, you'll be governed by that influence. If you're linked into Dravidian ancestry, you'll be governed by that um, influence. And, and, and vice versa, or, or depending on who, which one is stronger and which one you also lean to, because the thing is you're not bipolar, honestly. You know, you, you, you've got conflicting, you know, um, resolutions where is it, do I go this way? Do I go that way? You know, and it leads to confusion. So it's best to stay within your own race because your race then gives you that opportunity to make that link directly, you know, without all these, um, other interferences, you know, it not, not being that anybody's fault, but it's just that you now you're less um, susceptible to other influences. Okay, right. <clears throat> Any other questions? Do you have a question, my bro? Yeah. Uh, my Shakati. Shakati. The book of the book of Leviticus. Mm. The cookbook. The book of Leviticus is it a cookbook? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's let's jump to Leviticus. Um, Verse 1. Alright, let's go to... Let me take a... Chapter 1, verse 1. Let's see what comes up. Alright. So, and the Lord... Um, any particular verse? Just read from chapter 1 to chapter... Chapter 4. Still, so let's jump to four and then maybe, we, um, okay, to actually understand what we're reading then. Yeah. And the Lord, okay, um, again, titles, names, etc. Everyone thinks this is God, but again, it, you go into the Semitic or the original languages, the word there is Yahweh, okay, or you could even have a different, a different uh, Adonai even. Yeah. yeah, so you have different titles and names. It wasn't talking about this particular creator character. Yeah, yeah and, um, if you go into the tools and you, I think, is it, is it the tools? I can't remember how this one works. I think it's, yeah, you go, here you go. So as you can see, you've got um, the Hebraic translation. Let's see if I can scroll down. Yeah, there you go. Right, so you see the word Lord, you have Yahuwah. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So that just shows you that it's not talking about a particular creator, yeah. you know, people misinterpreted that as being the creator. So he called, so let's just close that down because um, he called onto Moses. Yeah, so we can see word for word transliteration. It's called a word for word transliteration of the, of the Hebrew. Okay, and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation saying, all right, let's go to the next one. Speak the bar El unto Ben Yisrael Amar unto them. If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, yeah, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, of the herd, of the flock. Yeah. Yeah. So, question is, you have to start asking yourself, if if. God want, why would God want cattle and herds? What's the purpose of that? Yeah, and then it says, if 
his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male. Hold on. So if I burn it, <laughs> if I burn my, the food, I, sh I should offer a male. Okay? Without blemish, he shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. All right, I won't go on into the thing, but you get the gist of what I'm trying to show you. Show you. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priests, Aaron's sons, shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood around, about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall lay flat the burning of offering and cut it into his, into his pieces. And the sons of Aaron, the priest, shall put the fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. And the pre what does this sound like to you? If if you go to a, a barbecue or a regular cookbook, you know that's that. Is that what you're seeing? How, how are you seeing this? All right, I'm going to a barbecue, right? And I see the guy, you know, with the um with the fork and he's, he's stabbing the steak, and then he's pouring some um something on there, barbecue alcohol, sauce. barbecue sauce, and then it rises up in fire, and I flip it, etc. Why are you, what, why are we reading here? Are we reading the same thing? It's a barbecue. You know, and, and what, what in, in fact is that the, the Lord instructs the Levitical priests to actually wear certain type of aprons. If you, if you, if you see what a Levitical priest look like, okay, let's, let's just, um, right, Levitical priests, how they dressed. This is how they say Levitical priests dressed. The reason I put it to attention, because when I say my Lord's prayer, mm -hmm. you say my Lord's my shepherd. Yeah. To the shepherds. Right. Well, I'm just, I'm just want to show you. Yeah. If you look at the, the dressing, yeah, and now let's look at a chef, how a chef dresses. So you see chefs, how they dress? Can you see the similarities? Mm -hmm. Am I making it up? Or can you see the similarities? Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. There's similarities because what you're dealing with, as the brother is trying to, um, point out is that you're dealing with yeah, see the hat, chef's hat, yeah, chef's dressing. They may call it a um, uh, religious outfit, it's not. It was actually put there, designed by their God, because they were going to be cooking flesh for their God, yeah, for the Lord to consume. It wasn't just for him to just burn and he was going to consume it. So hold on a second, God is consumes his own creation. God consumes barbecued meat, like kebab, you know, donut kebab. You know, that we, 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 we gone by and some of us buy, you know, um, what's going on here? So, yeah, so, yeah, no, the Lord, the Lord prayer. Yeah. Okay. So you have, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So in terms of that now, mm. you see that with that, you come to support the God way to bread. Yeah. The churches. Yeah. The, the communion. Yeah. Communion. Yeah. The communion. Yeah. The, the, thing, the blood of Jesus. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's all symbolic. Exactly. It's symbolic. all symbolic or literal meanings of, Cannibalism, yeah. yeah, and um, what's the other one? If you're cannibal, and there's another one as well. Um, that um, I've forgotten the name, yeah. yeah. But basically, people, these are flesh eaters, yeah. These 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 beings that you or people have ascribed to as being the creator or Lord or Yahweh, etc. These are beings who are actually uh, carnivorous, flesh eating beings that have come and impersonated. Yeah, it's an impersonation, and because due to man's ignorance, these beings have been able to infiltrate and convince man that they are the creators, right? And what they've done is then they've created this book known as the Levitical, the Leviticus. Okay, this book was given to them because the Levite priests were chosen specifically, you with me, to perform these uh, rituals. Yeah. Yeah, and then these rituals are all based on blood sacrifice. Okay, you you um when you go to place like Haiti or even go to the the Mayan civilization, those blood sacrifices that was going on. This is because the same thing was happening. Beings that we now can call extraterrestrials, okay, were coming in the in the the guise of gods or supreme beings. All right, but like I said, due to man's ignorance and man's imagination, 
they have turned these extraterrestrial beings or these highly advanced beings into a god character because they this this particular being was more advanced than them you know what i mean um had more information or had more technology than them when you read um in fact you're going back to exodus you talk about um a cloud let me do some science with everybody here how long does a cloud take to form in the sky does anybody know yeah, it's 10 minutes, okay? How long does it take for it to dissipate? Or when, for rain, for it to, you know, when it showers of rain and then for it to recreate again? Do you know how long it takes? Approximately 40 minutes, they say, all right? So, this cloud was in the shape of a pillar. How many clouds have you seen in the shape of a pillar? Ever. Anyone? They, they, they would even call it lenticular clouds. Lenticular clouds means like it's shaped in the form of like a, a lens. Okay? So, have you seen any clouds that has lens, lenses? No? No? Okay, what about a cloud that lasts for 40 years in the desert? This is what they're saying in, in the book of Exodus. That the Lord God traveled in a cloud for 40 years with the Israelites. That's his craft. Let's get it real. Because this cloud, it descended and it rose. It resided in the tabernacle with the Israelites. And no one could come to this um, temple unless they had a particular shielding on, which they call the stones that these Levitical priests had to wear because you had to be specially garmed in a particular thing because what you were going to touch was of high energy. And these stones could absorb that energy. That's why they were told to wear it. Okay, so it wasn't no God coming and then minutes later he he lasted for 40 years and 40 years in, in the desert. Just think about that. Okay, so when we when we teach these things about where um, these extraterrestrials, etc. and the, the influence they have on human beings is because they've been coming, okay, for thousands and thousands of years and they've been manipulating human beings for that period of time. And then what they've done is they've chosen specific um, representations on the planet to represent them. So the Levite priest was one of them. Nowadays, you call them the Bilderbergers. Nowadays, you call them the Rockefellers. Nowadays, you call them the other names. What other name? The um, Luciferians conspiracy or Illuminati. Yeah, the Illuminated ones. You heard of Illuminati, everyone in here? Yeah. But you never knew that Illuminati were connected to extraterrestrials, did you? Did you know that? Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Okay, you knew that. <laughs> so, we're the illuminated one. Okay, what's another word for Lucifer? Does anyone know? Morning star. The morning star. The illuminated one. Yeah? And when you look at Lucifer, you're looking at Lucifer. Yeah? Lu meaning animal, and Sifer means circle. Yes, as an animal circle, because he was res responsible for looking after or um, being in control of the animals that were on the planet. And these animals that were on the planet, unfortunately, they know, were known as the Adamites. Okay, they were created for food. So this, this being known as Lucifer, his job was to keep them as a flock. That's what the brother was talking about. This sheep or shepherd and this flock was to be kept so that they could then consume them. That's what these extraterrestrials were doing. They were consuming, they were food for the gods. Okay? Right. So, back to you. I hope that clubhouse. Okay. Club, we'll, go, we'll come to you and then we'll go clubhouse. Yeah, clubhouse. Hey, yeah, they do have a question. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, yeah. Thank you so much. Should you come to the call? Thank you all of your wisdom, your teachings, you answered a lot of the questions I had. Okay. Um, and one is, how, how do I find the tones? How, how do you find the tones? Find the language. Okay. The language. Okay. Um, we have our website, which is going to be posted up. Um, is unitedsabiansworldwide.com. But the, um, it will be posted up on the um, link up above or in the chat. But it's unitedsaviorsworldwide.com. So 
what what essentially is is that these tones and these vibrations these frequencies as i was saying earlier is designed specifically or you are made up of those tones because that's your natural nature tone okay of a particular species or race on the planet so other races have their tones as well so if you are um of nagaru descendancy when i say nagaru that's a tone that we use to describe um the african race okay so these nagaru our tones by natural nature is f a and c so if you um check out united savings worldwide.com you find more information you can register as well and learn the language through there there's many different sources than the the, the language of um you see if i can bring it up actually yeah. So here's our website. Okay, so you can um, you can you can see. Yeah, you're welcome, my sister. Um, that's this is what we are trying to show people that it's not just a question answer forum, and you're here just to get sound, you know, get the knowledge and sound heavy to your friends, etc. This is actually a culture that is being resurrected by a supreme being that has incarnated you with me and you see it wasn't it doesn't sound it sounds strange to say a supreme being has incarnated but when we were in our original state as africans when we talked about the pharaohs or we talked about the the, the kings and queens this wasn't strange to us we knew about incarnation we knew about special beings that will be you know, born at a particular time in a cycle. Like for instance, um, if you watch um, Shaka Zulu, the movie, okay, the witch, the wise elder, she said that a child was going to be born. They looked at the stars and they were able to predict an incarnation of a, a, a warrior that was going to defeat the British. You with me? And then Shaka Zulu was born and that's what he did. So we we knew about cycles. We knew about uh, manifestations of supreme beings coming on the planet. This wasn't strange to us. So when we talk about this, this is just another one of our ancient ancestor who happens to incarnate every 25,000 years. Okay. And the reason why he incarnates every 25,000 years, because we go through cycles as a race. We have our, um, uh, what's it called? Our beginning cycle. Again, the brother was teaching this last week. Then we have our, our pinnacle where we are like on the highest level. And then we have our declination. We decline. So these cycles is that we start to lose the origin and essence of who we are. And then the, to factor that in, we also have other races that come in into these cycles. And when they come into these cycles, unfortunately, some of these um, species or race of people they subjugate other races and indoctrinate and push and suppress the original people with me. So, so because of that, it has to take a warner, a being that has 76 trillion years of information, a being that is, will incarnate to resurrect you back to your original state and teach you, hold on a second, you're not just a mortal man or woman. You are a supreme being. Is that you've fallen so far that you've convinced yourself that you're just a god. I mean, sorry, you're just a, a human being or a, um, a mortal. But you have different stages of your existence. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. And check out our website. And those are also who... Okay, I'm a lot of different species, and because and, there's a lot of channeling of, you know, Pleiadians, Nocturians, and... That's right. That, that, yeah, and, and, and I, I know that I haven't, I always feel some type of way about it. Okay. So you, you, and I feel so, and I'm so glad that I, I found you guys, because... I thought this so resonates with everything that I've felt, you know, my entire life. So I just wanted to thank you for that. That's all right. You're most welcome, my sister. Um, so we, if you have any no further question or you have a question, please hold on because I've got other questions on our Zoom um, site. So I'm going to jump to that if you don't mind. Thank you. You're welcome, my sister. 
Okay, so Zoom questions. Let me just. Um, Zamata, is it possible to um, call them out? Because I can't seem to access the Zoom. Uh, so Uh, screen sharing, chat. Ah, there you go. Right. Okay, so what question do we have? I've got to answer the Patar one. Can you explain how the ETs created humans for gold? I can hear you. I'm on the Zoom at the moment looking at the questions. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah. 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 That's okay. Um, Zamata, um, notified me of it. So, right. So the first one is, can you also explain how the ETs created humans for gold versus these beings having us here to go back energy after race, especially? How does gold fit into this? What are we here for? Wow. That's a loaded question. Okay. Can you explain how the ETs created humans for gold? Right. The ETs that were referring to have been depicted and spoken about now over social media and anyone who comes across them will know about the Anunnaki. Yeah, if I say Anunnaki now, people are like, yeah, yeah, I know who the Anunnaki, you are just talking the same thing over and over. Let me ask you in here now, who knows what the word means? Anyone? Seriously, I'm not pointing on this point. If you know what it means, just say it. Okay. This being has told us what it means. Okay. Dr. Malachi Zedio. Anu means the highest or who is on high okay it's a it's a conglomeration of it's a word three-part word that's been put together so you got anu and you got na which means 50 okay and ki so when you're saying ki um i i don't want to um i'm gonna go onto the website because i have to show you you have here the the etymology which is going into the Greek language. Okay? So the etymology is going to the Greek language. So you have geo from the word ki. Yeah? And it's spelled two ways. K-I or Q-I. Right? And Q-I is the Sumerian way of saying it. And K-I is the Akkadian way of saying it. Now, the Akkadians and the Sumerians, through their um, empires gave birth to different empires, and one of them was the Canaanite Phoenician Empire. The Canaanite Phoenician Empire then gave birth to the Greeks' empire when the Greeks came down from their mountains and raided, and, you know, the, that's the whole story of, 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 of what took place. If you're going to study the history, you know. Okay, so from the Greeks, the Greeks took some of the languages from these Canaanites, the Phoenician Canaanites, and one of them that they took was the word ki, Okay, which means earth. And then that birthed the word geo. Because languages, okay, this pronunciation from, from, from other cultures, you can't, some, some cultures couldn't pronounce that word. So because they couldn't pronounce it, they said it in the way that they could pronounce it. Okay, just like you have, for instance, you see when you hear the word, uh, Makeda. If I say to you, Queen Makeda, you probably think the Queen of Sheba, right? If you knew her, that was her name. That was her name. Queen of Sheba. Her name was Makeda. But the name Makeda is an anglicized form of the Arabic word Ma'at Ka'a Reye. You see what I'm saying? So you lose the tones is what I'm trying to say. So as after a period of time when languages got changed or taken over or evoluted into other forms, the word Ki became Geo. And you have Geo where you get the word Geotherma, Geophysics, etc., the study of the planet, geology, etc. So these these Anunnaki, these beings came from the heavenly one in fifties to Earth. Okay, came from where? <laughs> Is the question. Well, they came from Nibiru. Yeah, Nibiru, the planet that crosses the skies. Yeah, and in that word, Ibri you find the word Abraham, Iber, yeah? Because his name was Abram originally, and he got changed to Abraham later on down the line when you read the book of Genesis. 
Okay, so this Ibri, Abraham, he was in contact and connect in connection with these Anunnaki. Right? So the, the answer to the, the brother's question or the person's asking a question on Zoom is that these extraterrestrials, some of them came from star systems, star constellations. And the star constellation that these Anunnaki came from was originally in Arcturus. Okay? Arcturus was the star constellation. Go and look it up. And it's mentioned in the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 9, and Amos, chapter 5, verse 8. So this is showing you that they've subtly placed the names of where they came from into the Bible. But you, just, not you per se, but people or religious people think it's just an astrological um, representation of that God created the heavens and the earth and he laid the foundations of the of the universe and then one of them was Arcturus, Mazaroth, Pleiades, Orion. Why would he mention these places? It's because this is where these beings came from. I see you, bro. Yeah. So these these beings, these extraterrestrials, the Anunnaki, were that was a title or um, an act. Just like if I was to cross the road, I'd be called the person that crosses the road. You with me? This was an actual act that they did. It was a it was a um, a transition from coming from the heavens to the earth. That wasn't who they were. They were beings that were of different um, extraterrestrial origin. Some of them were energy beings. Some of them were um, blonde hair, blue eyed. Some of them were dark skin with woolly hair, etc. And they incarnated on this planet. And the beings that incarnated on this planet, they were searching for gold. That's why when you go to the book of Genesis, it says, and God saw the land in Ethiopia where there was good gold. Yeah. And this particular God that they're talking about is a being known as Enki. Yeah. You see the name Enki. So if I type it in here, you see his name. All right. So you have Enki. All right. Uh, or Enki pronounced with a Q or I. Yeah. But normally you find it with a K I when it got moved into that canyon. All right, so Enki, as you can see, that's the the, um, the hieroglyph of his name, okay, or the title that he held at the time, right? So they are aware of Enki, but they call these um, Sumerian uh, mythology, yeah, because anything that they can't explain is a mythology, and that's what they do, all right? So these this particular being, Enki, as you can read, the Sumerian god of water, Knowledge. Why was he called the Sumerian god of water? Because his name was Ea. Yeah, Ea means that he was of the water. That's what Ea means, right? And he was the one that came in a craft, okay? When it talks about that earth was void and dark and there was darkness on the face of the planet earth and then God said, let there be light. This is the being that Inca came here in a craft, so it tells you about the 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 the, um, the soul or the spirit of God was hovering on the earth, okay? That spirit or ruach or wind is or is what was hovering. So and it was creating a whirlwind, and this whirlwind that it was creating, there was darkness on the face of the deep. What's another word for the sea? They call it the deep blue sea. Yeah. So Earth was originally a water planet, like we explained earlier. And this being came when it was darkness. And then he requested, he said, let there be light. He was communicating to beings who were outside of this atmosphere so that they could um, part the dust clouds so that light, the light of the sun could shine through. And this is what you're hearing, you're reading in your Genesis story about this particular being, Enki, who was rec recreating because he it, it uses the word reconstruct. Yeah. They tell you, it says, and God created, but the original word was reconstruction. There's a word called bara shit. Yeah, bara shit. Yeah, and this bara shit is talking about God creating the heavens and the, and the world, Adam and Eve, etc. All right, but in, in the Hebrew, for beginning, Okay, you actually see um, in the original bara, the 
The word bara means to make or reconstruct. Okay? That's what it actually means in the Hebrew. So it wasn't a, 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 a first creation story where everything began. It was actually a reconstruction story. Yeah? And this is what these particular extraterrestrials were doing. They were reconstructing or terraforming the planet at one time. All right? Does that make sense to anybody? Yeah. Okay. Um... I think there's there's further more questions to that, so let me just jump back onto chat. I appreciate that the time and also um, me going through this quickly, but there are books that covers all of this upstairs when um, class is finished. You can check it out and you can purchase them for your own reading at your own leisure. So how does gold fit into this? So these beings came here. And they were looking for gold for their Nibiru, this planet craft ship that was traversing the universe. Okay. And it was looking for a particular in uh, place to reside. So this planet was known as Nibiru. Now Nibiru was just one of the many crafts. It wasn't just the, the only craft. There was many crafts called Nibiru. Just like you have um, NASA, you have Apollo 1, Apollo 2, Apollo 3, Apollo 4, and they are shuttles. Yeah, the word shuttles means to leave one place and go to the other place. So these were actually shuttles that were leaving from the Arcturus star constellation in the Buddhist, and in, in, it's called the Boots. Mm. I, have to, I have to show you these things because this is all about, about you researching and, and knowing that these constellations all tie in to, um, sorry, not Boots like that, <laughs> um, constellation. Right, so the, just give you an image. All right, so here you have the Buddhist constellation. Can I be seen? Can you see um the Ursa Major, Big Dipper, and then you can go across, yeah, so you can see Arcturus, yeah. These are all star constellations that exist. So within these star constellations, these beings were coming from there and, and, and coming to Earth. And the Anunnaki were here to mine for gold to protect their dwindling atmosphere because the atmosphere that they, they resided on, it was dwindling. And gold, if you go and study what gold does, gold is actually a, um, it's a shield. It acts as a shield for the sun's rays and it actually can protect, it actually protects, um, the instruments of, um, NASA's shuttles or any spaceships that leave because you have um, the ionospheres, okay? These spheres that when the, the, the um, rocket is making its trajection into space, it has to pass through these spheres. That's what one thing that they don't, you know, they show you on TV that this, there's a launch of a spaceship, but they don't tell you that it has to pass through different spheres in order to leave this atmosphere. Th does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah? And when it's doing that, because of the, so the heat that's on it, the actual wires and instruments are coated in gold because gold acts as a shield, um, prote it protects it from um, ultraviolet rays. Yeah? So these beings knew that science and they knew that they needed it for their planet. So when they came here, they were mining for gold and it was in the subterranean worlds that they were mining it, but it got too difficult for them. So they decided to, to then take a being that was originally here and enhance its abilities. Yeah. So it was able to use tools, etc., so that it could then use those tools to mine in the caves and in the, um, areas where they, where they couldn't mine. <clears throat> I'm cutting the long, the story short, but essentially that's what took place. And then, um, the gold was mined and it was eventually being taken back and forth. So I'll leave it there for now, but. When it pertains to gold to do with us, okay, there's actually in our blood, originally, we had gold in our blood. You can find this in the movie, um, what's it called? There's a movie that they made. God, yes, yes. God's of Egypt. Yeah, God's, 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 God's of Egypt, right? Yeah, yeah, God's of Egypt. They actually tell you in there that the ancient Egyptian gods had something called math hu zat Okay. So, math, who, that. Okay, they refer to it as elixir. Um, 
Am I still right? No. Who's that? Okay, yes. Maybe I'm spelling it incorrectly. Can we someone get the right spelling for me? Because I'm pretty sure I was a. Hang on. Uh, What's that? Yeah. Let me just put that. Yeah. H U Z. Yeah, that's what I put. H A T. H H U Z H A T. Elixir of life. I've just put elixir of life there, bro. Elixir. Okay, so here you see here. Um, obviously, you can find that the master teacher talks about it in a, a book called. But essentially, the Mafkuzat was is uh, was within our blood, and what we're able to do with it is that we could actually open up certain dimensions and certain vortexes. I can't seem to find it for some reason, but I'm not spelling it right. <laughs> um, initial life. Actually, another name for it is Orme. Let me just put that in. Uh, well, I think I'm going crazy, but it is Orme. Monotomic oh. mm. code? Yeah, it's, it's like it doesn't want to show it. Mm. There you go. Right, so they, this is what they refer to as monatomic gold. That's another name for it, right? So this monatomic gold, our ancestors were actually did have this in our DNA, all right? And it was um, this this monatomic gold was made from six different elements, okay? Um, palate, palate, I can't remember what elements off the top of my head, but um, if we go into here, I think it probably mentioned it in here. Uh, so this this is this is a science that our ancestors were familiar with so yeah all me i did write type it right i don't know why it didn't come up <clears throat> yeah so you can actually research this and you can find out that it had certain um elements and these elements when they were changed into their elements into their monoatomic elements what could happen is sorry does someone want to write down yeah it could actually change your ability to heal your dna repair your dna um turn you into a craft open up certain dimensions and this is what was in within our blood originally as as um non-ether or african beings and then eventually some of ex some extraterrestrials wanted this particular gold in their dna so what they were doing is they were actually kidnapping stealing abducting us original people to actually take um and infuse their dna with it so that they could have the same abilities as well so this was actually going on thousands of years ago and what took place is that when that's why it's such an ancient science is that when the Europeans found out about this, they were then started to actually dig out our ancestors from the tombs of the pharaohs and they were actually grinding the bones of our ancestors and making it into a lecture so they could drink. What happened to them is that they went crazy because it's a different formula to their chemistry. And that's a lot of them went and actually went ended up going crazy, etc., because they couldn't use it the way that we were using it naturally in our being, in our being. Okay, so this is something that extraterrestrials were actually looking for. This is something that extraterrestrials actually want because they know that some of us still have it. And um, when a mother actually is with a child, she produces it naturally in her milk, and they refer to it as colostrum. Yeah, this is what a child gets. Um, it's like literally like a thimble full of, of milk, but it's very thick. And that has all the nutrients, proteins, antibodies, 
everything that's in that colostrum for the first, I think, week or two. And the child, when that child consumes that, actually protects their genes and their DNA from get, catching viruses, etc. Mm -hmm. So this is actually known as colostrum. So you can go and research that as well. But that's actually um, monatomic gold. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why the female is divine, because she's a supreme being in the sense that she has all these abilities. Right, sorry, um, I think there's a, a few more questions, and I'll get back to that question. On, um, so jumping back to our chat. There's a lot of questions today. Um, glad there's a Q and A. I apologize in advance if I don't get to all your questions, but we'll endeavor to. Are you saying that the Hebrews are eating? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll clarify that in a minute. Um, here, thank you. Yes, everything's a mutual exchange. So who is your God? Who do you serve? So the question, who is your God? What we're taught, okay, through our natural nature is that we are the deities, okay, that everybody knew about. Okay, so when you're talking about who are the gods or who is your god, we are that god, right? That's why I was um, earlier explaining that we've been told that we are mortal, mere mortals, but that in essence, we're actually divine beings that have incarnated into flesh. And it's just that we have something called amnesia, yeah, if if you know anything of what amnesia does to you, or you you're into a sleep or comatose state, and amnesia makes you forget who you are for a temporary measure. Some people can have it for longer, but sometimes it's temporary. And the way to um, get help somebody remember when they have amnesia, you you can work it out. Someone who's forgotten who they are, what do you do? You bring them a picture, you play them certain music. You tell them about the foods that they used to like. You tell them about who their ancestors or their relatives are. Like, so, you know, I can't remember. Oh, no, that's, this is your auntie. This is your uncle. This is your, this is your son. You know, this is your child. So they're, they're making you remember. Why are they making you remember? Because what happens with the brain, when the brain start, has amnesia, the, um, what is known as the neurons and, as, and the synapses, okay, are deadened. There's no flow of electricity or current. So they're not connecting. And, and the memories are not being formed. So in order for the memory to be formed again, when you ride, for instance, when you start to ride a bike, yeah, if you ride a bike long enough, it stays, it, it hard, there's a hard wire, it hard wires into your memory. So you, you don't, it's like a, a groove is cut in there. So likewise, with the memories of your past lives or your history or origin of who you are, is that these this information what it's doing is, is getting you to remember your original state as gods. That this is what you were doing before. You know, you were in communication with your ancestors. You were able to turn yourself into a craft. You were able to be, um, have wings, grow wings. Yes, yes, you do have those abilities. It's just that they're dormant. And you, this being, Dr. Malachi's job, his job is to help get you to remember who you are. You know, and it is a tough job. Trust me. <laughs> it's a hard job. Not saying it's impossible, but it's a hard job because we've been so embedded with so many people's lies and then there's mixtures as well of, of other races and influences and the television and the this and the distraction of work and just general day to day life. You can't get in tune with your true self. Oh, it's difficult to get in tune with your true self. But when you get that spark of, you know, inspiration or when you get that moment where your, your mind is stilled, you'd be surprised what is come, comes to you. You'd be surprised what revelation or inspiration or guidance comes to you. And that's what they don't want you to have. Because once you're able to eliminate all of that, and one thing the master teacher said is give them back all their stuff, all their music, all their this, all their foods, give it all back to them. Because once you eliminate all of that, it's like you're doing a spiritual exorcism. Do you know what I mean? You're removing all that crap that they've, in, you know, in, indoctrinated us with. And now you are in your true state or closer to your true state, which means that it's easier for your ancestors or relatives who are in the energy realm to be able to make contact with you. Yeah. And that's what they don't want. Because once you're able to make contact, yeah, 
it then gives you the window of opportunity to create things and come together and build just like we did in ancient Egypt, in ancient Samaria and all these other places that were great empires. Yeah. And they don't need, they don't want that to happen. They have to keep us dumbed down. So that was, um, that is part of that. And I'll jump to your question. Ju- yeah. So what's your question, my brother? And then um, we'll go the question back to was soon. from YouTube. Okay. Can you tell us about the correct diet? <laughs> okay, I'm going to make a caveat right now <laughs> and say to you that I'm not a practitioner of of um, holistic medicine. I don't have any qualifications or anything like that. So I'm going to put that there to, to let you know that when we talk about diet, it's, it's kind of like finding what works for you in a wholesome way. Okay, so I'm not going to say eat this because this is going to, it's going to happen to you. It all depends on your genetic background. It also depends on your blood type. It also depends on, um, um, your DNA and the types of people that you may even be around and what types of food that they eat. You understand? So it's not just a clear cut or oh, stop eating this and you'll be okay. Yeah. So you have to then make a conscious decision first and foremost to want to gravitate towards eating more um, fruits and vegetables. Okay, so what I can tell you is this, is that when you eat meat, okay, meat is flesh, okay, and flesh has, um, is something that you have to cook, okay, so the basis that you have to first of all cook it down so it's palatable, yeah, and, that, and, your, and your body can digest it a bit better because if you know about our body system and how it's designed, is that you have a, what is known as an elementary canal or your, or your colon. Your colon is very long, like it stretches that a lot if you take it out, you just keep going on and on. It's very long, yeah? So that colon, it has to go through a digestion process, okay? Now, if you are a meat eater, like a carnivorous animal, a lion, a whatever, etc., their elementary canal is shorter, and on top of that, they have in their body um, the, the chemicals needed. Like you have um, what called sulfuric acid. Is it sulfuric acid in your in your stomach? Yeah. Okay. They have other forms of acids and com- um, elements. As, as uh, I'm going to keep it short, elements that can break down the red meat. You with me? And it passes through their system easier than it does that of a human being. So now you've eaten this, consumed this meat, this dead flesh, and it's in your body. Not to, I'm not even going to talk about the ones that are processed, because that's another story. Just think about just, 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 just the meat for now. And it then will sit, because you've got a longer canal, and you don't have the right acids in your system and in your stomach to break down this meat, it sits and it starts to rot in your system. When it starts to rot, diseases from that animal is still inside your body. Yeah, and it starts to rot and parasites are then released into your body, into your bloodstream. Compounded with the fact that because now it's not been eliminated properly, you go and buy more meat and you put it in your body. Yeah, so it's compacting and compacting and compacting. Now, these meats, depending on how that animal died, okay, because it's quite traumatic, the animal releases an um, energy whether it's trauma, fear, etc., into its bloodstream. And you consume that, it becomes a part of you. So when they say you are what you eat, you're literally, you are what you eat. Mm. Because the fear, the trauma, the this, the that, is all part of that animal, which is now part of you. And which gets translated from a physical into an energy state. And that energy state then plagues your mind. Yeah, It actually affects the way you think and behave. Right. So that's what's happening on the when you're eating meat. So the best option is vegetables and plant based foods. I'm not promoting what's out there. I'm just saying natural nature teaches that you should eat plant based foods because plant based food is more natural and can um, break down in your body easier. You see what I'm saying? Than meat based foods. Okay, so that's just the simple, simplified aspect. Now, the energy aspect is that meat actually has a lower vibrational state than plants. Plants have a higher frequency. 
So because they have a higher frequency, they're more connected to the spiritual realm, while meat is more connected, the vibration of meat is more connected to the lower realms. Now, I was explaining much earlier about um, that when you're communicating or your beings are influencing you, beings by way of your name, you know when I talk about names and how names have, have resonance and frequency, well, likewise, the same thing with your um, the, your genetics. You give off a particular energy every time you consume certain foods. So if you're a meat eater, you're vibrating on a certain density or vibrational frequency, which means that beings on that frequency will are attracted to you. Yeah. Likewise, if beings who are on a higher vibrational frequency, if you're more of a meat, I'm sorry, a vegetable eater or vegetarian, they are attracted to you because it's all about energy and what you give off. Because when you eat meat, you give off certain um, pheromones. Yeah, it, it leaks, it actually seeps through your body. So certain beings, they may not have eyes, they may not have mouths or anything, but they're energy and they can sense your energy because your aura changes. And then they're attracted to you. And sometimes they may come to you and you may think it's a dream. Yeah, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> because those pe people who know that they felt a presence on them, okay, and you were sleeping, they're known as, there's two names for them, Incubus and Succubus. These are extraterrestrials who vibrate on a certain frequency and they can come into your dimension or into our dimension they can actually come and make an image in your mind okay where you can have a nocturnal emission and they can actually impregnate themselves and take that semen and or egg and then produce a child from it so that's the science that the masters teach us okay that you have beings who are vibrating on certain levels that can do this and it's all about your diet the type of frequency you're vibrating on, etc. Likewise, beings on a higher vibration can also come into you and do positive things as well and help you, guide you, etc. All right. So that is um that's the answer to that question. Um, so it all depends on what you want to eat, and but I'm giving you the, the 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 science behind what you should eat. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You have a question. You want a mic? Right. Uh, one, one. Oh, so you got a question, um, and then you. Uh, and I jump back to Zoom. <laughs> right. So you literally briefly, briefly touched on part of my question, which was um, to do with turning our body inside out into a craft. Um, mm. How was we designed like that, and why was we designed like that, and what parts of the body do we use to turn into a craft, in, and that we have to nurture? Okay. Um, Dr. Malachi Zigyo, um explained that you have the ability to bring the real you, the energy being known as the etheric being, the etheric body can come outside of you and it can create an, um, uh, an actual vortex, okay, of, 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 of sound. So the sound that you're using creates an energy around your, your actual physical body. And then when your ether being comes out, it turns into a craft and can take the whole of your being because okay. what's taking place is molecules have to go into a little bit of science and physics, okay, to explain. Yeah, so you have pu the periodic table, all right, which is broken down. And these periodic tables, these elements, when they come together and form together, create molecules, yeah? All right, and this is what's happening. So what is a molecule, right? You have different elements that combine together based on the electron pairs, etc., and they fuse together. So being that you're a being of energy and frequency and vibration, when you're chanting, you're chanting to raise the elemental orbit of these molecules. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you're made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Yeah, those are the elements that make you up, right? So within these compounds and elements and molecules, 
as you start to chart the electron pairs, you have the proton and you have the electron, which is then goes into a higher state of energy. Each time you're chanting, you're actually moving your frequency into a higher state of energy. Yeah, and that higher state of energy, it then turns into a photon, a beam of light. Okay. And then when that be when for a split second, it will draw back down again into its a natural state of orbit. So each time you chant, it goes up to a, high, a next day, a stage of orbit. Yeah, and then it beams a beam of light produces, and then it goes back down. So what we've been taught through our teachings is that we should be chanting nine, three, and nine. Chanting every single day, if you can, yeah, don't, don't, don't say, well, the guy in class said, and I'm at work, and it's nine o'clock, or three, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna now start to chant. I mean, Muslims do do it, they do go on and do their prayers, etc. So you shouldn't be exempt from that. But if you had the opportunity to do 939 every day, and all the others, Musbatu or Sabians were doing 939 every day, what they're effectively doing is they're raising their vibrational frequency. And then they, they're creating that light that the master was talking about. So if you're chanting, um, Anun, Atun, Atun, Amun, Panabab, Yanun, da 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 da, do you know what I mean? Anuki, Jawepa, Ashuk, Emba, Baut. Those are tones, vibrations, and frequencies, which is then oscillating. Remember talking about the oscillation? The oscillation is taking place, which is creating a, a, a field of energy. Okay, that field of energy is then being generated and coming outside of you. So the etheric being, which is actually energy, mm -hmm. is then coming outside of you and creating that craft, that Merkaba. That Merkaba is created. And if we're all in here chanting, or what they refer to as the Muta South, that's what they do. They do it every single day. Yeah, you are able to then start to create a levitation. Because your molecules are now vibrating such a high frequency, you're breaking the force of gravity. Because remember, it's gravity that's keeping you here, anchored. Yeah? And then these elements, that's what they, it literally, that's what's, what's happening. So sound is a form of light. Yeah? And when you're speaking the tones and, and all of these things, we're speaking our own language, etc., we're creating sound and light. Okay? And the chanting is. Also, the beneficial effect of chanting is that it's actually raising your vibrational frequency to the point where if we did it on a constant basis as a group of people together, just like the Mayans, the reason why they call the Mayans illusion is one, because they were taken to other planets, and two, is because they're actually able to turn themselves into crafts and leave. And this is one of the things that the Master teacher is teaching is because this planet as he said in his old teachings, is that it's up for judgment next. And and if we don't get our act together, they can actually remove this planet. You with me? And they, they start and they'll start again. They remove everyone off this planet and start again. Because that's that our ancestors, they want us to be able to um what's the word? Evolute to the next stage of evolution, which is our higher selves. But they also, if things don't work out they will just wipe out and start again. Yeah? So our job is to actually elevate to the point where we can move and leave this earth and then eventually they'll cleanse it because there's beings here that are polluting it. Mm -hmm. And once they cleanse it, those who are worthy enough can come back. As to, as rulers. As rulers. Yeah? So that that is, that is part that of the... I think I heard something about that, but they were saying in the Holy Tablets, is it a thousand? thousand of Holy Tablets and also in other teachings of his sure, way sure, before. Sure. But it's a, it's an, it's a, it's a job that has to be done to, right. as a, as a gather together. Yeah. The word together means to gather, gather together. Yeah. yeah? Work on, um, becoming supreme beings together. Cause that's what we did. You know, so many times in our culture, we did rituals. There's rituals of the open and the mouth ceremony. There's rituals um, of, of, of uh, communicating with your ancestors. There's rituals about purification. There's rituals. Every single thing that we did in ancient Egypt or ancient Africa was all about rituals. Because we knew that our body 
was actually a tuning fork, was a was a, a vehicle that allowed us to transverse to other 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 states. Mm-hmm. You with me? We are, we understood that science. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just that we lost it over a period of time. Too. Yeah. So does that answer all your question? Very much. Total time. Uh, Taka Bira mm-hmm. four. Um, should we go back to Zoom? Was there a question on? Oh, sorry, my brother. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry, I just wanted to go back on the food subject quickly. I just wanted to build a little bit on that. Okay. So, I know you're explaining meat, mm-hmm. um, and obviously you can go into process if you wanted to, but yeah. I just wanted to understand a little bit more about starch and sugar. Okay. If you could build on that a little bit more. Right, so, um, at the club, I did a quiet class on this thing. Sh- sugar, obviously, that's a generic term for all the different types of sweeteners. So you have, you know, um, ugave, you have this sweetener, your honey, you got, you got different multiple types of sweetness, which is all under the umbrella of the word sugar. Okay. So you have natural sugars and then you have processed. All right. Processed sugar. And that's the white sugar. So when you're dealing with white sugar or processed sugar, it is again back to the DNA. Yeah. It has the ability to actually Okay, let's go into that. I have to, <laughs> we have to show this because if we don't, you're going to think, ah, oh, this guy is making all these things up. But, um, so you have DNA and sugar. Okay, so you can see that there's sugar that's made up of your, your DNA is made up of actually sugar. Yeah, ribose is a type of sugar. Yeah, so when you say deoxyribonucleic acid, you're actually saying there's a type of sugar that are formed into rungs and ladders and then it's built up and to become your DNA. Okay? So, now that's a natural type of sugar, ribose. So imagine if you have an artificial type of sugar, what do you think it's going to do to your natural sugar? It's going to strip it. It's going to break the bonds. And that's what white sugar does, processed sugar. It breaks the bonds of, of your DNA so that your DNA can't replicate properly. Do you understand? Yeah. And on your DNA, you have something called satellite DNA. Yeah, which is, I see you, my brother. You have something called epigenetics. Yeah? So epigenetics is that you have something known as methylated, um, how can I say, methylated receptors. Okay. No. That, Okay, can someone turn their mic down or? Okay, don't know what happened there. Yeah, so, um, this methylation process is that it it acts like an off and on switch. Okay. Can someone turn their mic off? I can hear noise in the background. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, with this methylation process, the off and on switch that's taking place, okay, is that it can activate certain switches in your cells and your cells can actually die or they can mutate. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? And that's what's happening with white sugar, processed sugar. It's a con- and it's hidden in so many things, do you know what I mean? That it's very hard to detect. Mm-hmm. But the best option is to try and find as natural as you can foods that won't affect or disturb your DNA. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah. Is it, there was another part to that, wasn't there? Was that yeah, it? it was sugar and yeah. starch as well. Starch. Well, starch is basically carbohydrates. Mm. So carbohydrates, again, break it down, carbon, carbo, and hydrolysis. So it's a process that's taking place where it's been split. The, the actual sugar, so carbohydrates can be anything. Oh, my God, I have to scream. That's okay. <laughs> right, so carbohydrate, uh, as being, being that is a type of sugar, so you're going to have like um, starchy foods, mm. which are carbohydrates, yam, sweet potato, etc. These are all carbohydrates, mm-hmm. you with me? It's what's happening is that the, um, the, the process, the step that is going through in your, the, the metabolic process that is going in your body is that it's being split into short, short, short strings of sugar. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. So, depend how much you consume of it and the types of carbohydrates you're consuming is how it's going to affect you because 
Then you go into it being formed into, for instance, glucose. Yeah, and glucose is needed by the, your pancreas, do you know what I mean, and certain organs in order to function. And th- I think 30 or 20% of glucose is actually used for your brain. You with me? Mm. So it all depends on the type of sugar you're consuming as a carbohydrate and what it's going to do for you. But if you're talking about processed, mm. that's the problem, is the processing. So if you have foods that are processed, they strip out the natural in- nutrients, the strip out the nutrients, and there's left of nothing in there. So what's taking place when you're consuming that, all you're basically consuming is just pure sugar. You get what I'm saying? Without any, none of the uh, actual goodness. Yeah, yeah. And that's why they said then it has to be fortified. You know, most of those cereals and stuff says, uh, fortified with mm-hmm. vitamin D and, and other biotin and all these other things. Yeah. Why are you taking out the natural to then fortify it with something artificial? Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense. Do you know what I mean? It's, I see it even, it relates to what you were saying. I see a program on BBC. So I see a program on BBC where they went to the Kellogg's factory. Right. And they weren't allowed to fill the process with the iron because okay. when they make the corn, they take out all the nutrients, but to add the nutrient iron, mm. they're actually putting metal iron into it, and you and you could actually get a magnet, and if you get Kellogg's um, cereal. cereal, put in a bowl of water, get a magnet, you can, so it's not even real iron, it's actually it's fair, metal yeah, iron. You say ferrous, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah so it's, 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 it's these kind of, um, it's these kind of things that we need to be conscious of, when we're purchasing foods, etc., because mm. it's the processing. That's mm. the main thing. You have to look for foods that are as natural, what they call organic, as possible. You with me? And then, and then making a conscious decision that what you're going to put in your body, you also have to exercise and positive thinking, and then also taking certain herbs which will counteract those things that you put in your body, i.e., chlorella spirulina bee pollen you with me these are actually mm-hmm. herbs and things that you can actually ingest in your body and they have the counter effect because they're they're known as anti um what's the word anti <laughs> anti anti all of these other things they're anti this and anti that you with me? i can't remember the actual word i'm looking for but yeah they they, they work against you kept having or prevent you from having these diseases because they replace what's being lost. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah? So that, that that's what I would recommend if you were going to go on that path. Okay? All right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is there ever a time when red meat is permissible to eat? Should we just eat seafood or just vegetable and fruits with a mix of nuts? <laughs> okay. Partner Babylon, Dr. Malachi Zijok, has prescribed for us what we should eat. He's given us guidance as to what we should eat, okay? And those, we can have those questions as well to add to that? No, I was just going to say something. Oh, okay. You going to say something? Okay, go ahead, my sister. I was just going to say that um, the mind scroll kind of explains a little bit about um, what happens when you eat meat, because... It has uh, uric acid, which is a form of That's nitrogen. That's looking for. Thank you, sister. So when you eat that, it your liver doesn't have the full capacity to digest it, which is why it hardens into your system, and then um, you get, uh, I think it's arthritis. Arthritis, gout. And it takes much longer to process mm-hmm. or digest that meat Thank than it would much. if you uh, were to eat vegetables and fruits, because there is also a misconception that... Um, that if you don't eat meat, you don't get enough protein, mm-hmm. which is not true. The, the, all the protein that you need is actually in plants because, um, plants get the most protein from the sun. So. Absolutely right, Zamata. Tawatat. And I'm looking forward to seeing you up here soon, teaching. <laughs> um, right. So yes, that, that is essentially, I mean, the Malta has explained it quite succinctly. That's exactly what takes place. So yeah. Um what was that? So we were talking about that and any other thing that pertains to the question? Yes. Uh sorry, Zama, there's a bit there's a bit questions and 
on Zoom. On Zoom, all right. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll jump back to Zoom um, this one, after this question. Tell Tad some other time. He was saying about the red meat. Oh, yeah. He said, should we just eat seafood uh, or just vegetables and well, fruits okay. mixed with nuts? Okay, so Zamata kind of like um, summed it up. But yeah, it is a um, a process of deciding to eat those things because of the fact that this works synergistically with your body and they, you know, it's, it's more in harmony with your natural process that goes on in your body. Do you understand? Eating these things because... Especially for nuts, for instance, um, my research on particular type of nuts like walnuts and almonds and even legumes, um, i.e. beans. You had a question as well, brother, didn't you? Yeah, you yeah. know what okay. you was talking about, um, so. Yeah. No one you was talking about. <laughs> so, uh, it's okay. No one so, that's our natural voice. There's nothing wrong with that, man. It's just, so I've got a really deep voice, but. That's fine, that's fine. Yeah, you know <laughs> Barry White. Go on, Barry White, man. <laughs> thingy, uh, you know what he was talking about Chicago before? Okay. Like, why Chicago? Yeah. Uh, um, thingy that, uh. It strips, it strips affects your DNA? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but, um, what about brown sugar? Okay. Uh, I was going to ask you that. Alright, I'll, I'll get to that then. Let me just answer this, um, regarding the, 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 the meats and the processes. So, um, regarding the, the, um, the, the, the nuts, mm. okay, certain nuts um, produce something called melatonin. Okay. Yeah, so when you're eating, for instance, walnuts, they found out food research, you know, these are research papers. I don't read the general mainstream information. Mm. Go into research papers, what they've actually studied about our body, what they've studied about DNA, and you find out that nuts contain, certain nuts contain melatonin. So when you eat them, they're actually producing from your pineal gland, helping your body to repair itself, and it also protects you from other diseases, etc. You with me? So fruits and nuts are very advisable to eat at certain times of the day. Likewise, you know, and and um the same thing with plants at certain times of the day. You know, yeah. um for instance, vitamin D. They tell you, oh, one source of vitamin D you can get it from lanolin, which is from the sheep. Well, sheep's wool, yeah, mm. but you can actually find a derivative of that in algae because algae gets um, its nourishment, just like the sister's saying, about from, from the sun, mm -hmm. and it converts that into vitamin D. You see what I'm saying? So there are other ways. Lichen is another one, which is another form of where you can get vitamin D from. Yeah. But obviously, the natural best way is to go into our natural habitat. Do you know what I mean? Because we, we produce it naturally. And actually, we produce all the antibodies and everything when we have our natural sun bathing our skin. Yeah? Yeah, I get you. Okay. All right. So, um, anything else? That was it, isn't it? Yes, there's more if you want more. Um, well, yeah, I do want more, but I've got to jump to Zoom. I've got Zoom. I've got a few left out. Um, do you know of or can you speak on the normal? And if those beings had to do with the earth and humans, Okay, it's quite a few questions actually. Um, right. When you say incarnated, this deity supreme being, being is here in a physical form. Okay. If you're referring to the master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. York, the supreme being that's incarnated in him is known as Yanun. Okay. He's a 19th elder from the, um, the galaxy known as Ilyun. And he's from the planet Risk in the 19th galaxy. Okay. Um, like I said to you before, we knew this science and we understood it in our ancient times and our ancestors were aware that, um, ancestors come back or supreme beings can incarnate. So it wasn't foreign to us. You with me? The concept of deity or God. It's just that it's how it's been now misinterpreted and then pushed down, you know, re, regurgitated in a form that we're no longer aware of or know of. You with me? It's foreign to us the way they've um, depicted the God concept. Um, so is astrology and tarot, etc., a part of this culture? No, not astrology, but astrophysics and astronomy are part of it and astrobiology. So it's not astrology as such because that's the study of 
um, a pseudoscience. They actually refer to astrology as a pseudoscience, which means it's a false science. The true science is astrophysics or astrobiology. And the reason why I say astrobiology, or what we teach as ast astrobiology, is that yes, the planets do have an impact on you. Yeah, so this pseudoscience, um, the astrobiology that pertains to is that as you stand here as an individual, if I say to you, do you remember, do you know who your parents are? Most of you should be able to say yes. If I say to you, do you remember, do you know who their grandparents are? You probably say, you know who your grandparents are. Okay, so that you're building up what is known as a, uh, a map, okay, of your ancestors going back. So this map that's going back, it goes back to four generations, okay? So you have ancestors that are in your DNA. So whatever um, science or astral science that pertain to them, i.e. their, their um, characteristics, their moods, their this, their that, their creativity, all of that is a part of you. So that's what we say that's astral biology. Because you're made up of more, not just you, but you're um, made up of all your ancestors before you. Yeah. And they're all in your DNA and you can activate them or access them at random or when you need to, once you know how to tap into them. And the way to tap into them is guess what? Purely by say like you needed to call your mom to help you with some cooking because you couldn't cook and you call, you go on the phone and you call her. And, and she guided you through how to make that nice pot of stew or rice or whatever. It's the same principle applies with your ancestors. You get on a phone, the phone is called chanting. The, the, and you chant or you speak to them. Just like you and I are having a conversation now. You sit down, you imagine and visualize what you want. And then you speak to them directly. And because they're in your DNA, and because you acknowledge that they're there, they will help you. If you don't acknowledge that they're not they're there, they can't help you. Yeah, it's it's that simple. You know, so it's like there's a joke that I heard, and it goes like this: that there's a guy, it's a Jamaican joke actually. A guy was sitting at, um, with his friend. His friend goes onto the sea, and he was swimming and everything. His friend, his friend starts to drown. So his friend says, "I think you heard this one, yeah? You heard this one? You heard this one? I think you heard it." So his friend saying. Help me, Lord God, help me, Jesus, help me. And his friend's still sitting there. So he's calling all these names, Jehovah, help me. And still friends sitting there. So they come, they find the guy, he's drowned. The paramedics are trying to revive him. And his friend runs over and says, what's happened, what's happened? He said, well, you know this guy? He said, yeah, I know him, he's my friend. So I said, so they said, why didn't you come to his aid? And he said, it's because he was call he didn't call my name. He was calling Jehovah. God, Jesus, Allah, he wasn't calling me. So how could I help you? He didn't call my name. Likewise, same for your ancestors. If you don't call them by their name, if you don't acknowledge that they're there, they can't help you. Mm. It's that simple. Yeah? So make that connection. The master keep going on and on about it because he knows the science works. And it's through tones, vibration, and frequency that you're able to align with them. And once you align with them, it's called something called quantum entanglement. Go look up quantum entanglement. It looks like the um, eternity symbol. Okay? Everyone seen the eternity symbol? Mm -hmm. Symbol of eternity? Okay, I'll tell you, these, these things can give me some funky things. Can you see it? All right, there you go. Yeah? So that symbol there is quantum entanglement. Yeah, it's eternity, infinity, constantly going because you have a loop back mechanism with your ancestors. Each time you chant, you're creating an entanglement with them. And it's as easy as saying Uncle John or um, Pana Babjanun or Pata or, you know, Yeh Yeh, Mukta, Muk, Muk, um, was it? I've my tongues now. I'm <laughs> just it's all gone out of my head. You know, um, yeah. So when you're calling on these particular deities, you know what I mean? Atum, Atun, Amun, etc. These are the tones that you're using. And those tones are making literally a quantum entanglement at the speed of thought. Yeah, at the speed of thought. And thought travels at a certain rate, okay, past the speed of, of light, 
to the point where it aged with you and make that entanglement. And they even showed this when they did a, an experiment. They took a DNA sample from, from, um, and they moved that DNA sample. Literally, they destroyed the DNA sample and they took, um, a, 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 a the, and, 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 and what can I put it? Another cell sample and moved it over to another room. Okay. What happened was that the field of that DNA sample was matching the field of the other one that was in a separate room. So what they realized is that energy is still existing and they were communicating with each other. Yeah. And that's what it referred to as quantum entanglement or what Einstein refers to as spooky action at a distance. Yeah. That's what Einstein called it because he understood that the, the relativity is that everything is relative. You with me? What you, what you're doing here can also affect you over there. Yeah. And our ancestors reside in that realm where what we're doing can also affect them. You with me? And some of them we can actually keep trapped because not all of them have made the grade. Some of them are actually trapped in certain realms and it's our job to help them re be released from those realms so that they can help us. Yeah. This is another part of the science that is never, it's not taught as well is that what you do here can affect your ancestors. Yeah. On, on the different realms. Okay. So I hope that answers that question on go back to the chat. Okay, so um sisters Amata Amanda is um broken down by chanting we tune ourselves in. All the tuning falls are used to tune instruments, yet likewise our bodies are like a, a natural tuning fork. Okay. Um what else is there? Quite a few things up here, innit? Is there a question on um your one as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're trying to get what's the time? <laughs> okay, right. You mean to ask it? Yeah, ask it, and then we'll jump to this one. We're we'll have to be fair. <laughs> it says, what's your thoughts on CMOS? And I think this says, Shiajit. Is that right? Shilajit. how you say it? Shilajit. Shilajit. Is that that new kind of thing? What's your that's, thoughts that's on... Quite, I've never... I've heard of it, but I don't know. I've, I've, I haven't done my studies on it. It says, what's your thoughts on CMOS and Shilajit? Okay. Love to know your thoughts on Dr. Sebi, who promoted most of, most of what you said about fruit and veg. Okay. So, what's your thoughts on Dr. Sebi and CMOS? Right. So, Dr. Sebi was uh, a very prolific ancestor. He knew his stuff. Um, there's nothing I can say apart from he was a natural healer, which is one of our, um, our relatives. Yeah. So he, he knew what he was doing. He was helping many people, you know, cure themselves of cancer, etc. So yeah, Dr. Sabi was definitely, yeah, up there with the ranks of the ancestors. Um, and what he promotes is what we teach because Dr. Sabi actually transitioned to becoming a Sabian in his later life. That's what most people don't know. Okay. Um, now, regarding CMOS, likewise, again, CMOS has, I think, up to 90% of minerals and micro minerals that the body needs. Yeah, so these are the things that you lose through diet, you know, through medicines, etc. Because what they don't, what they, they don't tell you, but you have to do your research on. Anytime you take a medicine, okay, you have something called microflora in your, in your gut. And each time you take medicines that are uh, pharmaceutically produced, it actually strips your gut of the microflora. Yeah. So the, your, what your microflora does is that it produces certain, um, hormones and certain, um, nutrients. One of them is known as serotonin. Okay. And what is happening is that serotonin, it actually helps your gut and, and repairs certain DNA and goes to your brain and can actually help your brain function in a particular way, etc. So this is very important for your gut health and your mental health. And what happens is that if you if you're not eating the right foods, etc., like sea moss and all these other things, it's not replacing what you're losing. You know, so that's that's the reason for it. Okay. Yeah. But there's so many other things that you can um check out. And the the Shilajit one, do you know anything on that, my sister? Uh so it's 
Yeah, so right. Well, tell us what you know. <laughs> um, what I do know is it's like a, a substance that comes from decomposed plants. Okay. Um, it's found, I believe, in Asia, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and what it does is, is it, it's mainly for men. Uh, okay. From what I know, men normally take that to help with um, testosterone levels. So serenity. Serenity. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a right. natural vibe. Yeah, right, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Okay. So, yeah, that's, that's, uh, well, we kind of, kind of guess what that is. Isn't it? Yeah. You have a question? Well, oh, oh, I thought. Oh, 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 you want to add to it? You want to build on the shilajit? Uh, yeah. I really no. don't know what it is. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. I thought that's what you were going to say. Were you going to. No, I mean, no, no. No? Okay, <laughs> yeah. no worries, bro. No yeah. worries, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my sister. Yeah. Um, can I ask what do you think of taking vitamin D if you're vitamin D deficient? Right. That, that's why I was saying that um, sometimes. Taking what you can get access to is better than taking nothing at all. Do you understand? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. most of them, they have now found out that it actually doesn't really help mm-hmm. that much, but it kind of like, it's like a placebo. You with me? Mm-hmm. Some of these vitamins that are out there, they're, they're more placebos and actually helping. What I can advise you, do you like mushrooms? Yes. Do you eat mushrooms? Yes. Mushrooms go vitamin D. Yeah. They have vitamin D in there. So the the um other things that have vitamin D that you can source are bee pollen that has some vitamin D in there as well, trace elements. So it's about those trace elements that you can access that your body can in, um harness and use. Do you see what I'm saying? So with the with the ones that are tablet form, that's why I mentioned about the algae. You can actually get that in tablet form. Um, you can Google it and, you know, I think it's on, it's, it's on, um, Amazon and you can actually get that in the form where you can actually ingest. You see what I'm saying? So, algae. yeah, algae. it's not algae itself. It's the, it's, it's the, it's what algae produces, which is mm-hmm. the vitamin D that they extract from oh. the algae. So can you go to like, I wouldn't oh, recommend oh, Holland Barrett. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You have to go to the natural herbal shops. Oh, yeah. Okay. The natural herbal shops. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. I just want to build on that slightly. Yeah. Would, it, would it be right to assume that um, plants, sorry, not necessarily plants, or fruits, I should say, mm. that are sourced or gain most of their energy from the sun mm-hmm. would contain high levels of vitamin D? Not all plants um, absorb that or create that, convert that, just you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's just certain things because... <laughs> vitamin D actually goes it's not it's, vitamin D is a hormone let's just get that right first and foremost yeah it's a hormone but it goes through certain steps in the, the um, liver and the liver converts it into the form that we know do you see what I'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. so you what you want what you need to do is find out the, the form that it's in and what the liver does for it and it's in the form of um What's it called? You got two types of sunlight. Um, you got vitamin D, and then you got two types of vitamin D. That's when D three is the one that you need. Yeah. So D three is what you your body needs, even though you can get access to D two. But D three, when it get converted into the liver, the liver then processes it through certain steps. You with me to 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 create the hormone that we call vitamin D. All right, mm-hmm. and then that has. I mean, you, there's there's books on this subject, mm-hmm. and like I said, there's research papers. You'd be surprised. Trust me, uh, is for erics diseases. You you'd be surprised what vitamin D is good for. Do you know what I mean? And and that's one of the reasons why during the time of COVID, we were we being that we are melanated beings, we didn't get the sunshine. We weren't getting the sunshine, so our um, body was getting was susceptible to the COVID virus, and because we, most of us were frontline workers, do you know what I mean, we were around helping people, nurses, cleaners, etc., in home in homes and shelters. We were, we were we were the first to contract that disease. And what what going into the COVID um, situation now? COVID was an actual thing that was used as a genetic marker to weaken your DNA. Mm-hmm. 
you see what I'm saying? So it's actually a genetically modified thing which came from beings known as the Arcturians, which we now, are, as I broke down, are known as the Anunnaki and the Pleiadians. These are, they, that their job was to reduce the planet to a certain population. And COVID was just one of the diseases that they made. Okay, so just to keep, keep put it out there. All right. Okay. Um, let me jump back onto here and then I'll get back to question online. So, do you know or can you speak on the normal? And if those beings had to do with earth and humans? Yes. Um, the normal were again another type of extraterrestrial beings that came from the Sirius star system and they mixed in with the Dogon tribe. Okay. So they refer to them as the normal and these normal taught them certain sciences that they, they still use today. Like for instance, they knew that every 60 years, was it, I think 60 days or 60 years, 60 days, the, the Sirius star system would shine a particular energy onto the, back, onto the planet and then it would charge them up. So they knew that every 60 days when the Sirius star system came or the Orion star system came around, okay, there were those energies that would be sent to the planet. And then when they did the particular dance, etc., they would actually activate certain energies and it would charge them up and heal them. So there's, the Dogon knew this science from the beings known as the normal who came from um, the Sirius star system. In fact, they were the ones that were taught about the series A, B, and C. And the master teacher now has explained to us that series C being the one that was destroyed, um, leaving series A and series B. And this series C that was destroyed, beings that had got to a level where they could leave the system, solar system, or the, the galaxy known as the series star constellation, they went to higher realms. The ones that didn't make the grade were placed in cells and those cells that they were placed in was placed into the dolphin. And this is the project that the brothers asked them about called the Noon Project, where beings were the DNA of Patar was put into the dolphin and the dolphin came here to this planet and birthed us. So that's the whole science of the project regarding, you know, the normal series A, series B, etc., which the um, ancient Egyptians referred to as talk about as well, um, because they referred to as the beings in the waters known as the Ogduas. Yeah, the Ogduas, the eight beings. And these eight beings were basically sound and tone and frequency beings because they utilized sound to communicate with. And they used to vibrate on a certain particular tone, which was the F, A, and C. Okay? But that's our early, early, early evolution in our in our ancient ancestry, the Obduex. Um I'll go after do one more question and I'll go back to you. And I'm mindful of the time as well. So um everything the creator does in the physical realm has many levels, dimensions of spiritual insight. The animal sacrifice represents the animalistic sinful nature of humanity, their lust. In other wisdom has built her house, she has killed her best Okay, I don't know whether that's probably a... Okay, that's not a question, is it? Can you recommend some books on the topics we are discussing today? I live in Washington, D.C., and I found one of the bookstores here. Okay, um, greetings, uh, Derek W. Um, you can get books that we're discussing. It's, it's so many, but Existence, How and Why is one. Um, can anyone else recommend any? Um. Frequency and vibrations. Yeah. Tones, sounds, vibrations, frequency. That's actual fact number 18. That's a very popular one. Um, emotional energy. That's another one. Um, divine, intelligent design, divine design or plot of aliens. That's the one right there. Yep. Um, the one's called, the one called Kabir Kadam, Bigfoot. That's another one. So there's quite a few really. Um, Moving on, I'm going to try and move on as fast because obviously I'm conscious of the time. Unless you know one wants to go and I can carry on a bit longer, it's up to you. I'm coming All right. <laughs> Are the DNA tones, AFC, tuning forks or vocal sounds? Thanks. Sorry to not know the greeting yet. Rahubat Foloshu um, is the greeting. Are the DNA tones, AFC, tuning forks or vocal sounds? Okay, they're both. Um, Zamata did break that down, so she mentioned that they are. 
both uh, tuning and vocal sounds. Because, like, for instance, um, again, Haptui, um, one of our teachers, Ray Hatap, did explain that, for instance, you have the A note, the F note, and the C note. So with these particular tones, when you're playing it, you can actually hum to it as well, yeah? And the, the creature that actually does this naturally, or creatures, are the hummingbird, the bee, and the dragonfly. Those are three creatures that actually hum on the, um, is it F or is it C? F no, isn't it F? And when they're doing that, they you see when the hummingbird, if you look at the hummingbird or the bee, its body size ratio is actually, the wingspan is too small to carry its weight. So the question you have to ask yourself is how is it flying? Well, it's generating an electrocurrent magnetic frequency and that electromagnetic current is then keeping it levitated. So when you see, for instance, um, a craft, a UFO, and it has the zip and it can move up and down, left, right. Well, if you watch that of a dragonfly or any of these small insects, that's exactly what they're doing. They can move to the left, they can go up because they're using the same science that these extraterrestrial crafts use. Okay, so that's electromagnetic energy that they create around them and allows them to move left, right, up, down, etc. in different directions. All right. So just just a little bit about the bee and, and other um, insects and other creatures. Um, please address, is our native African mother tongue sufficient or is the Nawabian the only correct tongue? Right. It's the closest our African mother's tongue, but because it's been so diversified now, yeah, we going back to the original tones of our ancestors or the beings that resided. It all depends on your how far your DNA goes back and also how far you want to go back. Because it is the language of our ancestors, okay, it's not a language of this planet. It was something that came from came from another star system and was brought to this planet and then reintroduced into us. And the way it was done, it was done by way of um, our vocal cords. Okay, they did an experiment on first the, the parrot. I think it was a particular parrot, the African grey parrot, isn't it? Yeah, the African grey parrot and the mandrill, the baboon. And when they used that science, they then found that it could work. And then they moved that technology and placed it into the female so the female was the one that was able to speak first. Hence, if you know, females talk a lot. I won't say anything. No, okay. okay. But they talk a lot in the sense that... Yeah, I'll be very careful with that. <laughs> um, so they, they basically what I'm saying is the females are the best communicators. Yeah, because they use more vocabulary and they use more la language skills, etc. And they brain things faster. And the, that, that's because of the fact that they were able to speak first. So they're so so called something called the what's the what's the gene called? P Fox. Fox P2 Fox 2P or P2? No, P2. Fox P2 gene. Yeah, if you look up the Fox P2 gene, you find out that this particular gene accelerates the human capacity or human brain. Okay? Um so that's what again the master teachers giving us that information. Um so yeah. It's sufficient because it's still protecting your mind from um, different forces that can infiltrate. But learning to speak the Mizbatia means that you're making a more connection with the ancient, the beings that were responsible for our existence, which are the Palmataru, okay, and Palm Razaku. Um, Hold on, just the, uh, in addition to the question, I see you. Plus, this culture is similar to ancient African spirituality. Because this is ancient African spirituality, is the first ancient African spirituality that was brought to this planet. Because what you have to realize is that the first people that were on this planet and evolved were known as the Sans people, yeah, from Botswana and other places, okay, who migrated up the Nar Valley from from the, um, the lower parts of South Africa, etc., and then from that, certain interceptions happened. Mm. So beings that came from Orion and beings that came from Sirius, 
and beans that came from Old Baron and beans that came from Draco star system and Arcturus star system at each particular point of our evolution, okay, or revolution, beans would come and intercept and then they'll mix their DNA to produce their own seed. So that's what took place. So the ancient African spirituality that you're referring to is this Misbatia, is it? How? Because when you go into the ancient um, ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, the word for star or teacher is the word sabbat. Yeah, sabbat, which tilt and ties into the word nabat, which means gold. So we are the gold children. We are the golden children. And these golden children, unfortunately, have been dispersed throughout the world. And our job as Mizbatia or Sabians is to call them back home and resur help resurrect them and get make them remember who they are again. So that's our job as teachers. Um, right, Zamal, you have a question? So um, it was to do with the language and the tones. Um, I know the master stressed and about proper pro pronunciation mm. um, to connect with our ancestors. Mm. Um, how would we be able to properly pronounce and um, is there a way that we can learn? Yeah, there is um, online classes. Um, there's telegram groups that you can actually tune into. Um, for those who want to learn and are really serious, we can post it in the chat um, afterwards, after class. And there's a link to that and you can actually join. You can have practice sessions. There are tests on there. There's also the unitedsabianworldwide.com. You can go on there, link in, and there's actually a language section where you can actually start learning the languages, communication, etc. Yeah, so that's there. So so what um, to add to that regarding the, the, the pronunciation, well, the master explained it like this. Did you speak when you came out your mother's womb for the very first time or when you're a few weeks old or a few months old? Were you speaking correctly, fluently? Yeah. You were gurgling and saying, instead of mama, you used to say probably something else. Do you with me? Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't articulate. Mm. So likewise, study, keep saying it over and over, repeat, say the words, even if it doesn't sound right. Do you see what I'm saying? Instead of inhibiting yourself, just try to express it. And the more you do it, what the master explained in, one, in, a, in an update is that your ancestors will work through you and they will help you start pronouncing the words. So the more you speak it or want to speak it, the more you start to learn and you, you will learn it much easier and easier and easier. And your brain, remember what it's doing to your brain. You with me? The neurogenesis. So your brain is actually growing new neurons each time you speak in a language. Yeah, and you, what, what are the brains linked to? The mental drive, the mental reservoir. And your mental reservoir is where do your ancestors reside? In the mental reservoir. See what I'm saying? So there's a science of what he's teaching us. Okay? All right. Oh, how time? How time? Um, yes, any last questions? Yeah, okay. Um, are you taking questions regarding dreams? If so, um, I had a dream, a man jumped in air, I found myself in sand and walked through my house. Months later, I found that Atum formed himself in sand. Just wondering if you'd know the meaning of my dream. Unfortunately, I do not because we're not here to interpret uh, anyone's dreams. Dreams are personal to you. And in time, as you elevate and walk through this actual school of learning, dreams will manifest or reveal themselves to you. So that's what I can say and how we've been taught by the master teacher. We're not here to interpret anyone's dreams. We're not Joseph of the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is your take on marijuana use? Okay. Um, as we've taught many times, the, the actual plant itself naturally can be ingested in a medicinal way. It's a medicine. Okay. Every plant has its properties and has its place in nature. However, when you start to then partake of it in, the, in, in as a, an intoxicant, what do I mean by intoxicant? When you start to smoke it, okay, when you're smoking something, have you ever tried to sit in a house when your house is burning and there's smoke? Anyone? Would you be able to survive and breathe? Okay, well, that's what you're doing to your lungs. Yeah, you're suffocating your lungs. So you can't breathe. 
That's a, that's a fact. Okay, so that's one aspect of, of a toxicant. The other aspect is that marijuana, because it's very similar in um, molecular structure to your melanin, it binds to your melanin. What is your melanin? Your melanin is the axis and gateway to your soul. So, if you're bunning and then you open yourself up, you allow disembodied beings to actually take you over your body and also use your soul as a vehicle to travel to other dimensions. So that's why we advocate not to use it as a smoking thing, but if it's a medicine and you need it to ingest to heal your part of your body, then yes, that we will say to you is, is, is good to do, but not as an intoxicant. Because it opens up certain portions of your brain and you cannot close down those portions once you open it. Okay? Um, this class is being recorded. Um, it's a live and answer session class, just like how the master used to have it many years ago. Um, someone asked about RH blood. Okay. What is the blood type RH? Okay. RH is stands for rhesus, okay, rhesus, and rhesus is the monkey that they found a particular antibody or antigen in, yeah, it's a blood type that they found in the particular animal, the rhesus monkey, so it's that protein that's in, the, in your blood, it's a blood type of protein, okay, and that particular thing is, was found in certain females, who, when they have that factor, when they're pregnant with a child, that particular gene can become like a, um, a scavenger and infect the child and make the child die. So that is what RH blood type is. Okay, it's a scavenger type of blood. Yeah, it's a.